The Federal Reserve knew well in advance that Silicon Valley Bank had a problem with holding too much of, of its money in interest rate sensitive long government bonds, did he? I, I think the investing public and the Federal Reserve, which cited it um, for interest rate risk problems, knew that it had interest rate risk. I think the Federal nobody Reserve didn't anticipated do anything about it, did it? Regulators were saying to this bank, straighten up and fly right, and they never did a damn thing about it. And the regulators didn't make it so damn miserable, which my understanding is regulators are pretty good at that when they want to be. And it's outrageous that these people took bonuses and sold stock in the days leading up to the bank's failure. We should hold these executives accountable for the fullest extent of the law and stock sales. I'm co-sponsoring a bill to do just that. 지난 3월 28일부터 29일, 상원은행위원회는 실리콘밸리 은행과 시그니처 은행의 몰락을 초래한 원인을 찾기 위한 첫 번째 청문회를 열었다. 이들이 흔들리기 시작했을 당시 분명한 신호가 있었음에도 불구하고 그것을 제때 해결하지 못한 정황이 포착되었기 때문이었다. 청문회에 소환된 사람들은 연방 규제 당국자들로 미국 연방예금보험공사 이사인 마틴 그룸버그, 미국 재무부 소속 국내 자금부 비서인 넬리 리앙, 그리고 연준 금융감독 부의장인 마이클 바, 총세 사람이었다. 마이클 바 부의장은 이 자리에서 실리콘밸리 은행의 몰락을 관리 실패의 교과서적인 케이스라고 규정했다. 더불어 연준 내부에서 2021년 11월 이미 문제를 발견했지만 은행이 해당 문제를 해결하는 데 실패했다고 덧붙이며 책임 소재에 선을 그었다. 상원 의원들은 3명의 규제 담당자들에게 날카로운 질문 폭격을 이어갔고 이윽고 그동안 드러나지 않았던 실리콘밸리 은행 몰락의 뒷이야기가 공개되었다. 월스트리트 저널은 소셜미디어 포스팅이 실리콘밸리 은행 몰락을 둘러싼 우려를 키웠다는 사설을 낸바 있다. 그 내용을 들여다보면 복수의 네임드 트위터 사용자는 이 사건을 누구보다 빨리 인지했던 것으로 보인다. 사건 초기 스타트업 투자자 제이슨 칼카너스는 현 상황을 두려워할 필요가 있다는 내용을 남겼다. 이어 킴닷컴이라는 트위터 사용자는 은행 계좌의 돈을 모두 빼라. 미국 은행들이 위험에 처해 연준이 긴급회의에 돌입했다는 트윗을 남겼다. 그 사이 억만장자 투자자로 유명한 빌 에크먼까지 트윗의 파도에 동참했는데 그 내용은 다음과 같았다. FDIC 차원에서 예금 보호가 되지 않을 경우 월요일 오전부터 더 많은 뱅크런이 일어날 것이다. We're able to figure out that something was wrong with Silicon Valley Bank before your regulators took appropriate action. Now, these folks don't have access to non-public information like the bank examiners do. But when people on Reddit and Twitter can spot bank mismanagement before the regulators, something is terribly wrong. 몇몇 투자자들은 스타트업들에게 현금을 어디에 보관할지에 대해 제거할 것을 주장하기도 했다. 스타트업 CEO들은 업무 메신저인 슬랙을 통해 상황을 공유했고 앞다투어 온라인으로 자금을 인출했다. CNN 보도에 따르면 한때 온라인 인출 시스템이 다운되기에 이르렀다. 그 결과 사건은 트위터에서 시작된 최초의 뱅크런이라 불리게 되었다. The, the Federal Reserve rather stress tested 34 banks in 2022. Is that correct? Senator, I, I don't have the, the exact number in front of me, but that well, sounds, I have your that report. sounds, that I sounds have your correct. Report. It says 34. <laughs> And the cutoff was $100 billion? Yes. Um, you didn't stress test Silicon Valley Bank, did you? No, under the Reserve, Federal Reserve Board's rules that were put in place um, for the transition into the stress testing, uh, it takes a while for a firm uh, to be considered above the threshold. Yeah. They need to have a rolling four-quarter average. Did you stress test Silicon Valley Bank in 2022? No. Okay. If you had stress tested Silicon Valley Bank in 2022, it wouldn't have made any difference, would it? I don't know the answer to that question. You stress tested these 34 banks for uh, falling GDP, spike in unemployment, and defaults in commercial real estate. Isn't that correct? Yes, in a typical adverse scenario for banks, we're testing but, falling interest but, rate. But that wasn't our problem in 2020. I, I completely agree and with you. It's not our problem today. The problem yeah. is inflation, high interest rate, and loss of value in government bonds, isn't it? 
I completely agree with you. So you, you, you stress tested in 2022 for the wrong thing. The stress test is not the primary way that the Federal Reserve or other regulators test for interest rate risk. But you, you stress tested for the wrong thing. As I said, Senator, I, I agree with you that it would be useful to test for higher rising interest rates. That's why in our alternative scenario, multiple scenario that we put in place for this year's stress test, we do that. The Federal Reserve knew well in advance that Silicon Valley Bank had a problem with holding too much of, of its money in interest rate sensitive long government bonds, didn't you? I, I think the investing public and the Federal Reserve, which cited it um, for interest rate risk problems, knew that it had interest rate risk. I think the Federal nobody Reserve didn't do anything about bank. it, did it? And for two years, it seems that federal regulators were flagging concerns about this situation. Is that a fair statement that for two years that the Fed was flagging? Uh, Senator, the, the examiners were focused on interest rate risk and liquidity risk at the big bank beginning in November 2021. There, at least as far as I know from the supervisory record thus far, I have, I have not seen something that said that the supervisors were focused on whether the firm was viable. Uh, but, but our review is underway. So were the regulators physically in the bank? So I've talked to a lot of intermediate-sized banks. They tell me that the regulators are right there uh, five days a week, seven days a week if they're open seven days a week. Were the regulators in that bank? Uh, physically speaking, I, yes. I actually don't know. The, the part of the supervisory period is during the pandemic when activities were happening I've got you. in part remote. So okay. I, I don't have yet, but we but will have. I just want to point out the fact that um, the pandemic's been over for a bit, for quite a bit, and the opportunity for those regulators to be in there would have been long before uh, a month ago. Yes, Senator, I just, I don't have the full supervisory okay. record. We've just begun our review, and I want to be very careful You'd, to answer only questions okay. I know. Do you know if the, if you know if the Fed supervisors met with the board of directors of Silicon Valley Bank? Uh, I, I don't know that yet. I know they met with senior management, but I'm still reviewing so the record. So you wouldn't know if Silicon Valley Bank had a risk committee and if, in fact, the Fed uh, uh, supervisors met with the risk committee? I, I will know that by the May 1st report. So what point in time does the Fed regulators drop the hammer on this outfit? We could have all the regulations on the book. Regulators were saying to this bank, straighten up and fly right, and they never did a damn thing about it. And the regulators didn't make it so damn miserable, which my understanding is regulators are pretty good at that when they want to be. And it's outrageous that these people took bonuses and sold stock in the days leading up to the bank's failure. We should hold these executives accountable for the fullest extent of the law and stock sales. I'm co-sponsoring a bill to do just that. 의원들은 문제가 된두 은행의 임원들이 부적절한 행동을 한 정황이 발견된다면 처벌에 나설 것이라는 의지도 드러냈다. 특히 가장 최근 발생한 실리콘밸리 은행 임원들의 대규모 주식 매도에 대해 우려하고 있는 것으로 나타났다. 최근 미국 증권거래위원회에 따르면 실리콘밸리 은행의 전 CEO인 그레그 베커는 은행이 몰락하기 직전 두 차례에 걸쳐 주식을 매도한 것으로 드러났다. 올해 1월 110만 달러 규모 그리고 2월 말 200만 달러 규모의 주식을 매도한 것이다. 더불어 지난해 말 그는 1000만 달러어치의 상여금을 챙긴 것으로 알려졌다. 더불어 문제가 되었던 시그니처 은행의 전 CEO 조셉 데파울로의 지난해 상여금은 860만 달러였다. 예금 보험공사와 연준 모두 해당 임원들로부터 해당 금액의 일부를 환수할 권한은 물론 처벌할 권리까지 가지고 있다. 양당 의원들은 예금 보험공사의 예금 보장 한도를 현재의 25만 달러보다 상향하는 방안을 논의 중이다. 만약 은행의 위기가 금융 시스템 자체를 위협한다고 판단할 때 규제 당국자들은 현재보다 더 많은 예금을 보호하려는 시도를 할수 있다. 그러나 2010년 제정된 다드 프랭크 법안에 따르면 현재 한도를 넘어서는 규모의 예금을 보호하는 조처를 하는 것은 의회만이 할수 있다. 청문회에서 나온 증언에 따르면 보호되지 않은 상태의 예금을 예치한 금융기관들은 이런 뱅크런에 더욱 취약한 상태다. 2022년 말까지 시그니처 은행의 예금 90%, 실리콘밸리 은행 예금의 88%가 보장되지 않은 상태였다. 은행위원회에서는 실리콘밸리 은행과 시그니처 은행의 전 CEO들을 소환했으나 
이들의 증언 일정은 아직 정해지지 않은 상태다.